Hello, it's Mark from Overlanding 5280. Today we're going to do a vehicle walk around on my 2010 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. So let's start under the hood. Uh, bone stock Toyota motor, 110,000 miles, it works great. We had Matt at Off-Road Engineering doing a lot of electronic work for us, and we'll start with his dual battery system right here. Uh, this is, this is off-grid side-by-side -side system with the blue CML ACR. All of our accessories are powered off the auxiliary battery. And what's great is when you're camping, this little button right here pops open and splits your battery system. So everything runs off the auxiliary. You can see how all the accessories are individually fused right here off of the power tray from our buddy Maverick. I'm gonna step across the side of the truck. You'll notice going across the firewall, a bunch of cabling with multicolored zip ties. So I get a lot of flack for that. But let me tell you why I did it. Uh, zip ties get brittle and they break under the hood with all the heat. So I came up with a method of having colors based on time. So I'll know when it's time to change out the red one or the blue one or the orange or the white. And I just keep rotating them by color. So it's worked out pretty well. I've got a blue C switch here that cuts power to the battery cables I have running to the back of the vehicle. And I'll explain why we have those when we get back there. But I do not want live cables running all the time if I'm not using them. So off-grid offers two types of dual battery systems. The side-by-side -side like we have and then a split system with one battery there and one here. This is an older vehicle, and we built a custom mount for our worn winch controller right here to keep it up out of the way and out of the water when we're off-roading. For intake, uh, TRD intake with a Safari snorkel. It's a great system. Tons of power on the freeway. Nice, easy flow. No restrictions. We'll finish up the engine bay right here with onboard air via an ARB compressor. For wheels and suspension, we're going to start here in the rear. We've got some Method Titanium Vexes with some 305-7017 KM2s. Now, one little trick thing that I've always liked is the extreme outback, no loss tire caps. Take a look at this. You spin the cap off and it hangs on a little tether so you don't lose anything. So let's move up here to the suspension. Some vehicle dynamics 2.5s with remote reservoirs. The leaf springs are the All Pro Expedition leaf pack. And then we've got the Timbrin active off-road bump stop sitting right there. Front suspension is the Icon 2.5 with remote reservoir. We've got adjustability on compression. 650 pound spring with a neoprene cover and the upper control arms by icon as well. Our bump stop is the Wheeler Super Bump. So the front bumper is made by Pelfrey Built as is all the armor and rock rolls in the vehicle. Super Bump, what they went out of business as this is great stuff. On the front here, we added a place to plug in our ARB air hose. A little quick release right there. Coming down here in the front, we've got a worn M8000S with the flat link and you can see the armor going underneath. I wanted to give Pelfrey Belt one more shout out on these rock sliders. Amazingly tough. And what I want to talk about is they did something they weren't designed for. We were in Alaska, a Mercedes ran a red light and T-bone us going about 45 miles per hour. The only only damage to the rock slider is the whole thing slopes up a little bit in the front. Of course there was other damage to the vehicle, door, fender, and it broke the front wheel off. The rock slider looks great, but the Mercedes, when it hit, it shaved the top of the motor right off. So let me walk over here towards the back. Got our TRD exhaust, Pelfrey built high clearance rear bumper with some rigid backup lights under the license plate. We've got our Clash 3 receiver. And if you remember when we were under the hood, I had that blue C dial for the power cut to the cables to the rear. Well, those cables come right to here. This is an Anderson plug. You can use this for jumper cables. But one of the things we use it mainly for, we plug in our air compressor right here, this Extreme Air Magnum compressor. It is amazing and can pump up your tires faster than anything else I've seen on the market. We have plenty of lighting on this truck, and let me start here at the front with the ARB intensities. We've got a flood over here, a spot over here, some D2s in the middle. In the factory fog light position, we've got a set of dualies down there. D2 rigids right here in the, for the ditch light. A great rigid light bar across the top, super powerful. We've got floods on either side mounted onto the tent. Coming around the back, we've got some duly diffused up here for camping. On the back of the Pelfrey built bumper, we've got some independently controlled backup lights. So with roof racks, we went for the Front Runner Outfitters Slimline 2, and the tent is the Bush Company Alpha. Let me take this from you real fast. Let me show you the tent. Super robust. The hinges on there are really strong. The tent is all aluminum. I wanted to show how we mounted it before I show you the top. So it's got six tent mounts. You can't really tell in there. Here, here and here it's mounted. On the rear, it's got tent mounts as well, but they're just kind of floating on rubber right there. I didn't want to have the back bolted down when it's flexing. We had a little bit of flex on the tent, so we built some custom Z mounts, one here and one here. 
what they do is they just clamp the tent down and now it's it's super solid the whole truck wiggles when you push the tent now on top i wanted to show you the roof rack all adjustable four crossbars these double as max track mounts when you put the pins in there we have plenty of stainless steel um, tie down loops from front runner have this back here we've got the snug top rebel one of the best options side windows that open up the window across the back folds down as well. Let me go ahead and show you what we have on the inside here. Got our ARB fridge on a slide out. Right down here, a blue sea below deck panel. We plug the fridge into here. Got some USB plugs here. Here's a switch for those lights on top, the diffuse lights. And then we've got the uh, Total Chaos bed stiffeners. These are great as the composite bed does flex quite a bit. Coming around the inside of the truck, we've got the mountain hatch tailgate right here. This thing uh, is really nice for cooking. Your drinks don't tip over, and it's just nice and smooth and easy to clean. Inside the cubby back here, we've got another below deck panel that I can turn on, and I've got USBs and cigarette adapter. Right here is a Rago Fabrication Max Track, Max Track mount, just like that. And then we've got the All Pro mount for the uh, high lift jack. Inside of the truck is just, you know, it's got the headliner in it. You can see how we bolted the front runner rack down using this right here. So let me show you the interior of the truck and how we have it set up. Let me get that camera from you. All right. So I'm going to use this light. We're running out of daylight. So we have the Wetacoli seat covers. One of the options we got is the gun pouch in the front, which is great. Good place to hold your magazines and your firearm right there. Of course, WeatherTech floor mats. Right here, we've got our locker and our compressor switch. I had to put my L and C on there, so I kept hitting the wrong one. We've got a couple of switches there for the light bars on top. Over here in this cubby, you can see we've got four of the other light bar switches right there. We've got our rear brake controller there from when we're towing. And this awesome accessory, this tech deck. It's great for the uh, ram mount. And I've got our uh, ICOM ham radio right there. And finishing up the front of the truck, that switch right there, that's how we control the dual battery system if we want to override the automatic part of it. Moving to the back. We have the wet coli seat covers in the rear, and we've got this uh, little tactical seat hanger here with a knife and some holds bottles of water in there. And we've got our silky saw right here, and that rounds out the interior of the truck. So a couple of questions I keep getting asked about the Tacoma is, did we change the gearing and what damage have I had? So yes, did change the gearing. We're running 48 nitro gears, game changer. If you haven't done your ring opinions yet, something you gotta do. Front ARB locker, rear factory locker. Part, second question, what damage? Bumpers have been smashed into, lots of rock rash on them. The full skid plates have been hit from front to back. However, the biggest damage we just had was about a month ago, we were on the Morrison Jeep Trail. Uh, first gear four low, about one mile an hour, tree branches were coming down the side. One of them slid right down the side and tucked right into here. And as I drove by, it kept going about three feet deep till it was about the size of a baseball bat and then it broke off. We got the cab and the bed and this was all pushed back and bent. However, the stick was jammed in there and it shaved the, the top of the gas tank, tore it open, broke all the hoses, all the tubes and pulled the filler tube right out and bent it down. So what did we have to replace? Every hose, every tube, fuel tank, and I had to bend all this back, it's still never gonna be right. The whole thing is waffled. However, it was leaking fuel and we still drove the truck home 500 miles. We just had to keep it below half a tank and it didn't leak out. And it took about 20 minutes to fill it up because all of the venting was dent, was dented and damaged. So the fuel just kept spitting up. So I had to hold the fuel nozzle out and just kind of let it go in real slow. So it took about 20 minutes to get half, of, uh, half a tank full. And the rims are pretty beat up from four wheeling. And the tires, there's big, big turn, big tear outs and all the knobs on the tires. So this truck is definitely not a mall crawler. It does get used. So let me go ahead and uh, wrap this up for the evening. It's getting dark out here. It's Mark from Overlanding 5280. You can find us on YouTube and on Instagram. Have a great night.